Tēnako tou katoa. Good evening and welcome to the breakdown. Well, mission complete for the All Blacks for now. The trophies are locked away in the cabinet and they now have the luxury of having a test to spare before they name their Rugby World Cup squad in exactly one week's time. We'll be doing a breakdown special next Monday from 5pm as well. Joining us to talk all about the test action from the weekend, Tony Johnson, welcome back to the programme. Sukopi Kipu, great to have you joining us again and Sir John Kerwin. JK, you must be feeling pretty good after this good start yeah to I thought I was thinking about it this morning actually TJ I was thinking wow this week is really intriguing right are you prepared mm -hmm. to lose a test match to know who we're going to take as from number 23 to 33 I don't think that needs to be answered JK they won't want to lose a test match I, I know what you're getting at and and it's a it's a great position to be in because now They've locked away the Bledisloe. They've locked away the Rugby Championship. What I liked about this was that it was a different kind of test match to what we've been seeing, uh, Zekupi, that, yeah. that they had uh, no sort of command of the scoreboard as such. And they were put under or asked enough questions of their defence by Australia at times, and they kept their composure and their structure on defence and then that transition from defence into attack. I think that's the big positive to come out of this. Yeah, I thought they, I mean, they, they weathered the storm really well in that first 20. You know, the Aussies come out really hard and they, they spoke about starting fast and strong. And, uh, you know, the All Blacks just weathered that storm, held onto the ball, built those phases. Typical, you know, Joe Smith style. They hang onto the ball, build those phases. And, you know, it came after, they, they, they ran up, you know, 10 plus phases and, and scored those tries. So, you know, um, again, it wasn't the typical uh, uh, All Blacks test match that they play that that expansive style, but it was something different. So, Corpi, as someone who's played 100 test uh, matches for the Wallabies, just close your eyes for a moment because the Bledisloe Cup is back in the trophy cabinet for the 21st yeah. straight year. There's nothing quite like having it in the middle of the dressing room, is there, JK? Full to the brim with beer. We're still unsure about how many it takes, but they've all had a go. The yeah, newbies well, are front and centre. Unfortunately, I was probably the last one to lose it. <laughs> How do you lose something that size? It. Yeah, I've lost it. Um, not the trophy, the actual the game. Um, yeah, we did actually lose the lid, but we won't go into that. But I, I think over the last 20 odd years, it has turned into something incredibly special. Uh, way more shared in, in my era. And I think the Australian side went through that, that beautiful period, probably when professionalism started. Um, but we want it to be more competitive. We're going to have to change it a wee bit and make it three test series or something because yeah. having it for 21 years is fantastic and we want to keep it. But from a competition point of view, um, you know, I'd like to see it possibly go back to three tests. Yeah, I think behind that uh, sort of niggly exterior that we saw from Eddie last week, I think deep down he really would have loved in World Cup year to get that Bledisloe back. Uh, at least give themselves a chance to go to Dunedin to win it back. Because I think if it, that's like a, a two-shot swing in golf. Someone's eagling, someone's bogeying, something like that. It would have been a huge boost to Australia. And as he suggested, I don't know whether the New Zealand economy would have got any worse than what it already <laughs> is. But you, know, I, I, you can see what he's getting at there. I, I actually think that test match was a pretty important one uh, for, for both teams. Um, I suppose the question is now is what happens, as you rightly say, JK, what do the All Blacks do with this remaining game? But also, where does that leave Eddie in terms of his preparation? Yeah, I think he banked on it a lot and he spoke about it. You know, he spoke about Dunedin, he spoke about MCG and I think the, the build-up to that was, was quite massive and I think, I guess it's just a little hiccup in his preparation with the, with the team and I'm sure he'll look to keep those combinations on this week. I, I thought Carter Gordon did really well and I, I think he'll just look to build the chemistry within that, the combinations he's got and, and keep working on that towards the World Cup? I don't think he's got a choice, to be mm. fair. Um, he'll know enough now. Like he's one of the hardest workers in the game. Uh, he would have looked at all the guys that he's dropped. He would have looked at all the players. He would have looked at every rugby league player. <laughs> you know. But I think he's got to settle on a side. We talked about combinations. Yeah. You know, I really like the, the, you know, the Barrett Ioane um, combination. I think they're starting to really gel. But you don't... We don't know any combinations in the Australian side, so he's got to go, this is my best side, barring injuries, and I'm going to play it now all the way through. Just getting back to your original question, and, and I think it's a pertinent point, uh, because he's got to name a World Cup team. This is I'm talking about Ian Foster here. 
So how much tinkering does he do? I'm not sure that he'll want to do too much. I think he'll want to do enough to give some people who haven't had a lot of action just to have a look at them, but I think he's got a bit of momentum here and he'll want to keep that going. I, I think you have 33. to. I think you have to. Sorry, Kirsty, but I think you have to. Like, mission accomplished. There are problems. So for Aonuku, Caleb Clark, mm. um, is Aonuku going to be covering centre? Uh, you know, who's the other loose forward? You know, what are we going to do uh, with the back three? Is, you know, I, I just think you've got to go, here's the group opportunity, we're going to get out there. And the Australian side, I believe, for, for periods last night, Eddie will be happy. First 20, second 15, uh, you know, second half, first 15 minutes. But now's the opportunity for the country to go, OK, Fozzie, if you want to take some risk and change five or six, because we want to know who's going to the World Cup, Go for it. Does he know his World Cup 33? I think he'd be getting closer to it. I, I think he. I think now he has a really good idea about what his best, probably even 23. I'd say he's been getting close to that. Yeah. And it's just a matter of he's got a few sort of like five into four or yeah. four into three situations that won't go that he's he's got a sort of... It's not a bad place to be in, though, is it? Well, it's not, it's not a bad headache to have, isn't it? Like, I think versatility is going to be a big part of it as well. Like, guys that can cover a couple of positions is, is usually pretty key in World Cup, to, uh, you know, years. And whether you take three halfbacks and three hookers or two or three, um, that, you know, some, some uh, coaches have run the risk of taking two. You talked about halfbacks. Cam Roygaard joined the All Blacks club last night. JK, did you see enough from him in the 20 minutes that he got? I saw a calmness for a young man mm. in that position. Um, I saw a confidence in the way he plays. So what I didn't want to see was rushing, you know, frenetic and running around. Um, so he showed maturity for his age. And what I did want to see was him being the extra loose forward, because I think we have a beautiful mix when we have that. TJ Peronato has obviously been injured, hasn't been able to get in, but you think about how many times he's come on in big games, TJ, and just being that extra loose forward, being a bit more aggressive. And I saw that from, from him last night, so I think he's ticked the box, because then we've got variation. Got two very similar players, and him who can do, bring something different. And a really, really good left boot which yeah. he, he showed, and how good is it to have that versatility, that extra weapon, that ingredient that he brings? I'm quite biased, because he's, he's a county's yeah. man. So, <laughs> um, only federal, yeah, huh? Only federal man. Yeah, um, yeah look, he's, 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 he's really, he's, he's, a good, he's a great young man, and, and we always knew that he was going to, you know, get there some, at some stage, and congrats, congrats to him last night, you know, um, well deserved. And like JK said, he's just calm. When he needs to run, he knows when to run and just deliver, and I'm sure Yet, you know, the, the experienced guys around him to make it easier. Yeah, that was one of the things I really liked about this performance was the composure. As I say, you know, Australia, they couldn't quite sustain it, but there were times where they were getting plenty of ball and they were asking questions, but the All Blacks kept their shape, mm. kept their composure, kept their discipline, which is hard to do when, you know, penalties, are, you know, often come into it. And, and, and I, I think he probably, you know, coming into that environment's been really good but Roy Gard, he, he just slotted right in there. Um, I think there's a, I think it's a good point, TJ, because what I'm seeing, what, what I think all of us saw in the last couple of years, and, you know, Fozzie's been really open about the disruption, and, but we saw a, a, a sort of lack of clarity under pressure a few years ago, two years ago, last year, whereas now they seem really confident in the structures, they're prepared to wait, whereas in the past, maybe last year, they'd, they'd try and do something try and create something, whereas there seems to be this patience about them, this confidence, this real confidence in the moves that they're doing, but also the people around them, so can important. We, can we sit back and appreciate what Scott Barrett seems to be doing right now at the ripe old age of 29? He is outplaying and outshining arguably the two greatest locks of all time right now, TJ, well, and I, has done all season. I, I, I agree, all season, because I think consistently outstanding for the Crusaders. He has actually taken on the mantle. What he's done is that he's knocked a couple of edges off his game. He still has the aggression, he still has the power, he's moving bodies, he's carrying effectively, the skill set is all there, but he's, he's not giving away uh, penalties. Remember, he, he did cop a couple of red cards early on in his career. He has become perhaps you know, one of the, the lead figure in this all-black pack at the so moment. So how do you work the pack around him? What happens with the other two leading figures? the Retallics and the Whitelocks. I, I don't think we should say that um, Sam Lightlock 
as an impact player. No. I think that, um, I think it was Graham Henry that invented it, you know, the whole 23. I just think you go, one of them's gonna come off the bench and at this stage, Scott's in the best form. He's showing that the work rate, his work rate is incredible. So he is the perfect lock that's getting in, doing your work, he can carry, he can support, he can do all that. So, you know, I don't think, everyone likes to be in the starting 15, but Sokopa, you know it nowadays, yeah. you know, just important the people that are coming on and finishing the game. I mean, Sam came on last night and worked incredibly well. Didn't miss a beat, they didn't bring, they didn't bring Barrett off, they brought Retallick off. So maybe the comparison is, well, who are the big men? Because Scott's not as big, line-out wise. Um, but if you've got Frizzell and a few others, it doesn't matter. And, and they're just sharing the load. I mean, he's just, you know, Sam Whitelock's coming back from injury. And who knows, you know, that's a good problem for, for Fozzie to have. And, I mean, not forgetting that uh, he's one of the Barrett brothers, you know. He's, he's a mix between Geordie and, and, and Bowden at the back. He's, he's wiry and, and his brother's running hard and fast through, through the middle. And you've got his brother as a lock, so some good genes there. And I think Sam Whitelock re remains an integral, very... Uh, central figure in this whole All Black thing because he is a bit of a, a line-out dissector, he's a bit of a scientist mm. in that regard and I just think they're in a great position where they've got three guys they can rotate, share the work. Like, let's not forget, um, they've also got, uh, well they've got a decision to make haven't they because they've got to make a decision between Tupovai and Josh Lord and probably. And Patrick Tupolotu even Paddy in the mix. Tupolotu possibly as well. Oh. So. so what happens with the locking stocks? In seven days' time, <laughs> who makes it and who doesn't? Because that's the conversation. Well, who plays that next week? Having, right? Yeah. yeah. Who plays next week? Well, you know, Lord and you, rest, you know, we, we know Barrett. We know Barrett's going to be amazing. Do we rest yeah. him? And do we put an experienced out there with Tupovai? Well, well the two young guys played against Argentina and did a pretty good job, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Good problems, like <laughs> yeah. you said. I don't think I don't think Eddie is yeah. having the well, same yeah. problems, right? Well, I mean, yeah. you, you, we look at the, the again, we, we go back to the Springboks, you know, they, you look at their bench, you look at their lock stocks, you look at the, the, the last World Cup, their bench was filled, was stacked, experienced, guys have been there, guys have been, um, and so you don't lose much when they come on, and, and it's, I think it's in the finishes that you win the test matches, you look at the 2015 All Blacks team there, you know, the guys that came on, they were the guys that finished the game, so... Um, unfortunately, I was on the receiving end of that, but... Um, Sonny Bill at half-time, yeah, I remember. You know, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it's the experience and, and the guys that you bring off the bench that you don't lose much and they actually add to the game. Well, for our Musashi power play this week, we're going to look at the finishing part of the match for the All Blacks. One of the great team tries, Rico Ioane just happened to be the man uh, who touched down JK, but everyone touched the ball. What was it that you saw in this about the All Blacks well, attack? First thing is where they're attacking from. <laughs> so they're attacking from inside their 22, which was seen for the whole lot, but also the movement off the ball. You've got guys cutting, holding up the defence, and then just the support play. As you can see, the guys in support just really tracking in behind the ball carrier and the, the the other thing that really impressed me was not going for the miracle ball would have been really easy for Anton Leonard Brown to go I'll try and get an offload um, even with a mistake here and we spoke about um, Mark Talia's feet I mean look at this you know he's marking a world-class winger there and he's just got that acceleration but then everyone's in motion you know and often you talk about when you talk to rugby players, they say, we've got to be in motion. In motion. And that means that when you look up and the defence is coming, you've got this whole swarm of people. You've got the ball carrier, you've got people all over the place. And that's what I loved about that try, particularly the work rate inside your 22, everyone chasing, but everyone working out. There was no one fat tracking it. They're mm. all going towards the board carrier. So when you see the ball carrier, there's four or five guys behind them. That takes a lot of effort. And then they spread out really quickly again. And that, that late in the game is not easy. TJ, there's been a lot of credit about the All Blacks pack and how far they've come in 12 months, but how, how much has this All Blacks attack come in 12 months? Yeah, I mean, to me, that's a, that's a classic. That almost goes back to the Wayne Smith era, wasn't it? Because that was one of his fortes, was this transition from a hard-out defence and how quickly you can respond to the, uh, the, the opportunity to break out, turn it into attack. And, and to me, that's actually been really a, a, a cornerstone of the game. I just like the fact that um, they've, they've, I th they've made some subtle changes to their attack structure. I I've got no doubt about that. They've, they've mixed things up a bit. I think we've seen subtle variations. Um, some of the little loop around movements that we saw in, in a couple of the earlier tests, they're sucking in defenders and, and they're creating space for the guys out wide. And when they get the ball, it's, they're devastating. So I, I just think, I get, just get the feeling that 
over the off season. There's a lot of thought, and, and you, you know what Joe Smith's like. He's just a real mm. scientist. Um, Jason Ryan and, and with, with Ian Foster, they've just worked at, at rounding out and, and giving themselves a, you know, a more complete game rather than relying on one certain style. You talked about devastating, impossible to defend as well, isn't it? Yeah. Like yeah. how hard was that for the Wallabies in that back end last night? Yeah, I mean the first half, as we saw the stats, 150 odd tackles in the yeah. first half, and it was just relentless. The, the All Blacks just kept coming, and it showed in the end there, you know, the, the scoreline blowing out a little bit, um, and that's it taxes you, you know, by at the end of the day, and, and that's 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 what they've brought in, again in their attack. They're, 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 they can hold on to the ball, they can build that pressure and they can go around you when they need to.